next to him. Freddie Roach in his corner. Steve, you know Hesta's been working at the wild card gym lately. Yeah, with all due respect, though, Hesta is the second best known Filipino fighter that Freddie Roach currently works with. And Marcito Hesta, the southpaw, orange gloves. Martino Norio, 33, 10, and 1. Hesta with only one loss on his record, had two draws. What's the book on Hesta, Steve? Well, I remember doing stories on Hesta when he was a young prospect about five years ago. And of course, the natural comparison was made as a Filipino southpaw to one Manny Pacquiao. It kind of reminded me of the 80s and 90s that anyone that was over 6'6 and could dribble was always inevitably compared to Magic Johnson, but as we found out, Manny Pacquiao's are very, very rare. Settled in as a pretty good professional prize fighter. He got his one title shot against Miguel Vasquez, a very, very difficult style who kind of stunk it out on him. The question is, can Gesta be any better than he is? Probably good enough to compete at the top 10 level, but is he ever going to be elite? And I think that's one of the reasons why he has hooked up with Freddie Roach. You know, he hasn't even come close to being a Nonito Donaire. No. And you know that country will back you any way you can if you have any kind of a glimpse of the future. And some of the action from round number one, and there's a quick sneaky little right hand landed by Gesta, who basically outmaneuvered and outboxed Martin Onario in round number one. This fight here is scheduled for eight rounds. But at the C-Mac Cap 7 gym, the brother is in charge of it. That's where Mercito and his dad started training. His dad actually fought a couple years ago. A martial artist is Hesta's father. That's a scary dude. You don't mess with, uh, <laughs> with, with a cuya. Antonio Orozco at 140 pounds. Worked that fight in, at Del Mar Fairgrounds and Onorio was cut nasty. Continued to go. Good scrap. Gatekeeper in the division. Somebody can measure yourself up well against. <laughs> Professional resistance, right, Steve? Yeah, Is that the I mean, term you taught me? He's going to give you solid rounds. Now, what, what you'd like to see from Hesta is some separation. Really try to make a statement here. Don't just win. Just don't be satisfied with winning a, de a decision where you're not going to really open eyes. Many of the times, you make your opportunities in the sport at the higher level by putting the exclamation point at the end of performances. And that's something, quite frankly, that's been lacking with Mercito Hesta. Well, I could see why, though, with Hesta, excuse me, with Onario. He's a big, tall, lanky guy, and he's a bit clumsy, and his head always comes out over his feet. Generally, they teach you to box on your back foot. In other words, make sure your chin and your face don't come over your front foot. Third round of action. Bethel Duran, Steve Kim. Oh, I just got a picture of some Agua Chiles and Ventura that they're making, Steve, as they're watching us. Mm. Sylvia is fixing the iPad. They have the party outside. Appreciate you, Sylvia. Yes, you want to fix the sound because you want to hear Steve Kim's voice. <laughs> Marcito Hesta, you're starting to hear the crowd make some noise. A lot of Filipinos came specifically for Hesta. No Mercy is his nickname. Starting to chant it inside the forum. Do you see him at the wild card? I know you work out there a lot. Well, he works out downstairs at a different time than when I come in. So I'm not really sure how his training is going, but I think just being around that atmosphere of the wild card, I think is really helpful. A lot of the times when you're at a gym, it's not so much about the individual trainer. It's about the guys that you can work with. I've always been a believer that who you spar with will oftentimes tell you how good of a fighter you are. As they say, iron sharpens iron. Well, there's a lot of guys who are not willing to leave a comfort zone especially as they get developed in their careers. You have to give credit to Hesta and his team to make the move up to L.A. for better work. No knock on San Diego, but... Right, and his original trainer is a guy that I know very well, Vince Parra, who trains a uh, young junior welterweight, Maurice Hooker. And I think things got a little bit too comfortable between the two ends, and that's one of the harsh realities of the sport. No marriage is really last forever in tonight game. in that blue corner. Yeah, Yuka, you forgot the towel. As Marco Antonio Barrera walks by in front of us, he's doing the Spanish broadcast tonight. He put on some wars, didn't well, he? Absolutely. Like I said earlier, February 3rd, 1996, that man began boxing after dark. What an oh, absolute he did. He was war the first one? against Kennedy McKinney, yes. Oh, wow. In this building. In fact, the first boxing after dark card was a bit of a bust. It was Johnny Tapia 
who had a technical uh, draw. So he hit a guy with a low blow who tried to fake it. I, I believe the guy's last name was Giovanni Andrade. But uh, Marco Antonio Barrera really stamped himself as a Mexican. Oh, oh. and down goes Honorio with the left. As Hesca's trying to stamp himself back into the division. Honorio walked in and ate that one. Here that in the fourth. He's been down before. He's battled. He's rugged. This is not foreign territory to him. See how Hesta puts it together here in the fourth. Beto, this would be a really strong statement if he could stop Onario instead of letting him off the hook. 2011 was the last time that Onario was stopped in a fight. And this is Onario, though, Steve. He, he's a veteran. He's been down before, knows how to survive, get his legs back. It's right up. Yeah, and he's also very, very durable. Star. Well, Ricky Mota in Whoa. the corner, moving him back. No oh, mercy, Hesta. I think he's shooken off that ring rust, Steve. He's looking Time. good tonight. Mexico against Japan. It all starts at 7 o'clock Pacific time. Moving him back again. Some pop in that left hand from Hesta. No, he's been able to buzz Honario a few times. The difficult thing about Honario, specifically for Hesta, is the size difference. One thing about Honario, he has the height of at least the junior welterweight. So Hesta, if you have a young fighter that needs a gatekeeper type of experience, you call him. Or if you're a veteran in between fights that needs to get a few rounds in, that's another guy that you have on your Rolodex. Solid round for the Filipino, Hesta. And Mercito Hesta racks up another round, and the story of the night has been that straight left, which has buzzed Onario several times. There's another good one there in round number six. You gotta earn your way there. You know, I just wonder, if he's not gonna get a title shot, how does he match up with a guy like Denis Shafikov, who can't make uh -huh. a bad fight. Uh, another fellow Southpaw from Russia, who I believe may have beaten Robert Easter a couple of weeks yeah. ago. And simply had no shot of winning on those scorecards, it turns out. But, you know, they say styles make fights. Shafikov, who was also another guy stunk out by Miguel Vasquez in a title shot. Sh Shafikov, I think, would push Gesta into fighting. I don't think Gesta would have any choice but to really stand and let his hands go against that hard-charging young nut. Yeah. One of my favorite boxing photographers out there watching right now on his phone. Not working tonight, but he's on the way to the fight. Mm. Oh, Onorio was back and it has been stopped. Wow. Tom Taylor has stopped it. Taylor went to the corner of Onorio between rounds and said something to Yuka, the trainer, because Onorio was stunned a bit in the previous round. Didn't go down, but he was going backwards. And you see Onorio's not really resisting. Uh, Beto, I, I don't know if that's the exclamation point. But it is a knockout, and Mercito Hesta may be moving on to bigger and better things. And again, when a referee basically tells a corner and a fighter, I'm watching you closely, they are generally looking for the first real opportunity to stop the fight. And there, it's interesting, it was not the left hand. It was a straight it's jab not. that basically jerked back his head. That's one of the things that referees are taught to look for. When a guy's head starts to have a whiplash effect like that, and you know what? It's, it's not the worst stoppage in the world, no. given the fact Onario had lost every single round on the scorecards, most likely, and he really does not have that eraser. So that fight probably was not going to change in any way. The referee, Thomas Taylor, stops the fight at 18 seconds of the eighth round. And your winner by knockout, Marcito Gesta. <laughs>